Hi, I'm Josh, and here with me, I've got Chompy. The Chompy? It's a portable sampling keyboard that carries on the legacy of the iconic Casio SK-1, while adding some new features considering that this came out in 1985, and this came out in uh, 2023. I'm not sponsored by Chompy Club, and it's not my goal to sell any of these. I just want to talk about why I like it and who I think it might be for. Consider it a first impressions kind of video, not a fully overview review sort of video. And if you enjoy it, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. Now, in the interest of first impressions, I thought that maybe I should talk about just what I think about how it looks and how it feels and the build. So it is a Kickstarter instrument, which I hear Kickstarter and immediately there are concerns like it might be shoddy workmanship. It's really well built. It has mechanical keyboard switches that are really clicky. The knobs are all nicely damped and the body is solid enough that I feel like I could travel with it without having to worry about it breaking. It comes in either a pink and gold or black and gold. And you know, I've only seen the pink and gold in person, but I, I think it looks really nice. Obviously aesthetics are more a matter of personal taste, whether you like having all the like fun, bright colors, it definitely leans more towards modern fun toy-like than vintage and classy, but I like that. I'll also add, and this is the first time I've seen this outside of Teenage Engineering's pocket operators, that it has the directions printed on the back, or at least a, a segment of them, which is super handy, although it does look a little bit funny if you're using it and then you flip it over to see what's going on. Now, uh, it was built with mechanical keyboard switches, and if you wanna see its mechanical keyboard RGB lineage in action, I had to peer over the keyboard. I couldn't see it from where I was. Now, those were my first, first impressions due to how, you know, sensory information is processed. But Chompy, regardless of all the fine design, is an instrument, and we should evaluate it as such. So let's take a look at Chompy as an instrument and see if we can answer a question that has baffled philosophers for decades. How does one Chompy? So I mentioned in our intro that Chompy is a sampling keyboard, and yeah, you've got this key here with the little Chompy character. They call it the Chompy key. And when this switch next to it is up, it's in a sampling mode. So we're gonna test it by sampling a ukulele. I've got just off screen. And now if I tap one of the keys, you can hear that it's recorded that sound. Chompy has a built-in mic right over here, which, uh, quick aside, love that. Love seeing a built-in mic on a sampler. So we're gonna flip this switch back down into the playback mode. There's a little bit of a extra empty room at the start of that sample. So as we move across Chompy's front plate and we talk about the different features, we're gonna find ourselves right here. This control allows you to change the start point of your sample. The sample also loops by default. If you want to turn that off, I can hold shift and press that in, and now it will no longer loop. And if I press this in again, now it's going to control attack. I don't really want <laughs> any attack on this sample. And I can click this one in to have it control a release. So you can hear how it rings out versus just ending. I normally like to have a little bit of a, of a release to it. I feel I should quickly mention that uh, while we're in this playback mode, the chompy key acts as a shift key. So if I hold shift and I hit this highest B flat here, that is a save key. So we can save this sound because right now it just exists within chompy's buffer and if I were to record another sound or turn Chompy off, it would be gone forever. So we'll save it here and save. And now we've got our saved sound. As for sample sources, Chompy can internally resample audio. You've also got over here on the side, 
an audio input if you want to sample from like a synthesizer, electric guitar, any kind of instrument that wouldn't be uh, useful sampling through a mic, or if you wanted to plug an external microphone in. And then of course you've got the built-in mic, and up here there's a slot for a little micro SD card that you can save and manage samples on. I'll also mention that Chompy has a separate like a uh, style of sampler engine. This one, instead of playing sounds back chromatically, each one is a different sound. This is intended more for uh, for drums. Now the attack, decay, start point, end point, these are all saved into the sample. But something that's not is the effects. So Chompy runs your sample, whatever sample you have selected, through the effect settings that you've dialed in. The effects are controlled by this knob here that has the little magic wand. And there's three that you get to by clicking the encoder in. So let's talk about them. The first one with this blue light is called Magic Wand. And it's a kind of combined delay and reverb. So there's our vanilla sound. And I'm gonna add a little bit of Magic Wand. If I hold shift and I turn this, it'll change the delay time. If I press this in, it takes us to a page that uh, allows us to modify saturation. And as you can hear, it still keeps the uh, settings I had before. If I wanted to erase any of these settings, I can just hold shift and click the knob in and it erases. When you hold shift on the saturation, you get a wow and flutter effect. which I really like. I think it pairs nicely with the lo-fi quality of Chompy's microphone. And then on this last selection, you've got a filter. If you turn it clockwise, you'll get a high pass filter. And if I turn it counterclockwise, I'll get a low pass filter. And then holding shift and turning this up will give me resonance. Now, like I mentioned, these effects aren't baked into the sound. However, if I added, let's say, some of this high pass filter and that wow and flutter, and I wanted to save that in the sound. If I hold the Chompy key and I press here, that tells Chompy that next time I sample, I want to resample internal audio. I'll turn that up. And now it's sampled that. One thing to note, if you resample to have the effects on, if you don't turn the effects off, then whatever you've resampled is going to have the original, you know, the, the sample that you just took with the effects added, as well as Chompy then also applying the current effects settings. So I'm gonna turn the effects off. And like before, I'm gonna hold the shift key, save, I'll save it to here and I'll confirm and it's saved. So you might have noticed as we go from left to right that there's this uh, big purple wheel here. And this is one of the main controls for Chompy's looper. So Chompy can record the internal audio and then, you know, continuously loop it. And it's pretty easy to control. So I'm gonna first add some of that magic wand effect. and some saturation. So the way that the looper works, or the way I like to use it at least, if you hold play and then you press this yellow overdub key, that arms the looper. It's getting ready to record whatever it hears next. So the minute I start playing, it's going to start recording that into the looper.
And I messed it up a little bit. If I hold these two down for a couple of seconds, it wipes what's in the looper and I can try it again. So, still a little bit off, but that is okay. And this is gonna be the trickiest part of this video because if I mess up what I'm saying at all, it's gonna be a pain to sync it back with this, uh, this looped audio. So while this is going, I thought I would talk about, well, first, what this big purple wheel does. It is a speed control. If I turn it, you can hear that it slows down as I turn counterclockwise until it's going backwards or I could speed things up. If I hold shift when I turn this, it'll move in fifths and octaves. And we're back to our original speed. Now, the other cool thing with the looper is, and I don't think this is unique to this looper, but you can add more than one layer. So if I hold the chompy key, and I'm gonna choose this sound, let's see. Hmm, maybe not that sound. Well, I think we've determined that my ukulele was about a half step out of tune but why don't we just try adding something with this? So I'll hit the overdub key. Now it knows that we're, uh, we're ready to record more into the looper. Earlier, I mentioned that Chompy can sample by resampling internal audio. And in case you were wondering whether Chompy can resample that looper, why don't I show you? I will switch us into sampling mode. I'm gonna hold down the Chompy key. And now when I go back, you can hear that we've got our sample. Something that I want to point out here is that um, the looper clears whenever you, well, either erase it, obviously, but also if you cycle the power on it. So if you wanted to, you know, if you made a loop that you really, really wanted to save, this would be one pretty easy way to save it. Just resample it into Chompy, record it, and save it to one of the keys. That looper function, I think, is really well integrated into Chompy, uh, considering especially that you can resample from the looper. And then if you wanted, you can throw that sample back into the looper for whatever reason. I don't know, if you wanted to have multiple layers of loopage. The point is, um, everything here is like, it's really cohesive. It, it's, very, it's very fun to use as a result. So the sampling is functional, the looper is sweet, and the fun factor is there. Chompy is trying to be fun, functional, and friendly to beginners, and I want to think that we've established that it's at least hitting those first two marks. Now, on the topic of Chompy being friendly for beginners, we're in this sort of difficult spot where, while I'm not trying to present myself as like an expert on musical devices, I'm not a beginner. So I thought we should bring in someone who is. My wife. Okay, so this is Erin, and she got me Chompy for my birthday, and she's very wonderful, and I'm very fortunate, and I love her very much. Erin, how experienced are you with sampling keyboards? I'd say about as much as Thor. Maybe less. Thor is not experienced with sampling keyboards. He couldn't even play them. Well, Erin, we're going to change that. For you, not for Thor. Aww. <laughs> okay, so Erin, this is all new to you, right? Yes. All right. So I'll walk you through how you sample. So first, do you see this switch here? Mm -hmm. You're going to want to flip that. All right, 
So now it's in sampling mode. You see how it's like flaring up when we talk? Yeah. Because that's it's hearing you know through uh, the microphone right here. I can make it have a panic attack. <laughs> so the way that it works is that you hold down this key, mm -hmm. and then it records whatever it hears. And then if I flip it back, <laughs> so what I think this will actually be easier now because we'll have four hands. Is why don't you? Um, when I hear you hit the sampling key, I'll play a note and, on the kalimba. And do I just hit it or do I press and hold? Um, press and hold. All right. And now if we go, and now you can flip the switch down and press a key and hold it down. So you heard how there's like a little bit of a, uh, like a, start to it yeah so what you can do just to start with this knob controls the start point of the sample so what you'll want to do is turn it you'll turn it clockwise to go forward in time through the sample and just keep hitting keys for a sec to see when you've gotten to that like that start of the sound that you want okay <laughs> Closer. Wait, you might have uh, overshot. Try it here. Try it again. Nice. Sorry, did I undershoot it? No, no, no. That's perfect. So now, try playing. Sorry, I'm I'm struggling to <laughs> not because I also want to play on Chompy. All right. Uh, now, you should. I know you play piano, so uh, play some piano. Ah. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. You did it. That's awesome. Um, so other fun things you can do. These are the special effects. So try, while it's on the blue, try turning it up to see how it sounds. And then just, you can keep playing. Very cool. Um, is it okay if may yeah, I touch yeah, the choppy? Yeah, please. <laughs> Other fun thing that you can do, I totally forgot to mention this. So all of these knobs, you can click them in to get some new functionality. So these ones, you can control whether, you know, like where the sample starts and where it ends. Mm -hmm. But if you click them in, what you'll get is attack. That's like how long would it take the sample to kind of fade into its max volume? And a decay, how long is it going to, like when you let go, is it going to just stop right away or is it going to kind of fade out? So especially with that sample, I would try clicking that one in and then turning it up a some. Yeah, so now it's blue. Try turning it up and playing a note. And when you let go, see how it behaves. I would try turning it even more. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I so like now. That. Yeah. Right? So you can hear how it like rings out. So now try turning that up and seeing. You digging it? Yeah. Okay. This last part, I'm going to, if it's okay with you, I'll demonstrate it. And then I'm going to hand it over to you. Sure. So this is a looper. And what it will do is it'll record a little bit of like whatever you're playing on here. So if I, I'll turn this up a bit. So I've got that cool sound. And the way that I like to use it, if I hold play and then tap this button, do you see how it, it's flashing here? Mm -hmm. So it's armed to record a loop. So I'm going to start playing. And when I tap play, that tells it the loop is done. This is how long it'll be and it'll keep going. And when I tap the overdub button, that's this one. I can set it to whether I'm uh, practicing, like I don't want it to record things, or I do want it to record things. And you can make these like fun compositions. And then 
this dial controls the speed. <laughs> and you can even make it go backwards. And if you hold shift, it goes just in fifths and octaves. So now it's playing back at normal speed. All right. So I'm going to hold down these two. Uh-huh. And that's going to erase what was in the um, in the looper. So to select a sound, you hold the chompy and you can just press one of the highlighted uh, white keys. The, uh, the accidental keys are like uh, separate functions. Okay. And you can go through, this bank is empty, but there's this purple bank and this white bank that have a ton of sounds. And this one is, is, one that we made. is the kalimba. So just pick a sound, let fate guide your hand, or you can just try out a bunch. All right, now if you play, it'll it'll play that sound. Ooh, fun. Would you like to try doing the loop with that one? Sure. So what you want to do, and I would do this with your right hand, because your left and your left hand is what will start playing. So with your right, with your right hand, press play, hold it down, mm -hmm. and then with your other finger, just tap the overdub button. All right, it's armed to record. Now, when you start playing something, it'll start recording it, and the loop will just go until you press play again. And then press play. Yeah. So you've got that. Yeah. Now, hold down Chompy. I would choose another sound and just try adding some, some doodad. Don't worry too much about it. <laughs> That's so haunted. Yeah. I also realized that uh, the overdub key, it, it wasn't recording. Perfect. <laughs> we have to press it again. I do think you were playing in C, so if you want to stay on just the white yeah. notes. But when you're ready to commit something to it, you can press the overdub button. Just remember, just like in real life, there's no undo button. Oh. The only option is to erase it all and start over. I don't know what that says about my view on real life. <laughs> I think I'll just go for it. Huh? Okay, yeah, go for it. That was maybe a bit jarring. No, 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 I dig it. And now? I think that you've created, um, honestly, this could just be the Metroid soundtrack. <laughs> I was thinking we're in space and there are problems. All right, now just amuse yourself with the, the purple jog wheel. <laughs> and as you go further backwards, it's a shame that the world can't see the cool, funny faces that you're making to emulate <laughs> the dropping pitch. I think I'm helping it. Yeah. Ooh, it got scary. <laughs> Okay. And then when you want it to stop, you just hit play again. I hit it hit it again more resolutely. So, Aaron, I have to ask, uh, beginner perspective, chompy, fun, yes or no? Fun, yes. Now, if if you were to be like handed one of these and asked to just play around with it. I know that you had me, like, barking instructions at you. I'm sorry, I don't mean to bark. I got that dog in me. <laughs> but um, would you feel, like, f I guess, like, confident and entertained in just exploring it? Yes. I do think that I would love this uh, handy-dandy instruction manual that I see near me. Wait, let's put that on camera. The instruction manual, I read it so hard that I tore it right here. <laughs> That's how you know it's good. Um, just to remind myself of what everything can do. Just because it's not um, 
as intuitive for me as it might be for someone who's played around with doodads before. Oh, check out this feature. <gasps> oh, so cool. So the instructions are on the back. <laughs> well, Erin, thank you so much for appearing in this video. I love you. I love you too. Thank you for having me. Yeah, put her there, champ. So fun for beginners, fun for the experienced, and a fun design. I hope that I've effectively communicated why I like Chompy. I don't think it's a groundbreaking device. Instead, it's got a pretty clear set goal of being, as I've said, you know, fun, functional, friendly, and I think that it accomplishes that. With that being said, I'm not giving Chompy a universal recommendation partly because I just think it would be sort of irresponsible to give anything a universal recommendation, but also because even though Chompy is really good at what it does, it only does what it does, which sounded a lot smarter when I wrote it in my script. I think it's pretty clear when you see it in action what Chompy can do. If you watched it and your first thought was, eh, I could take it or leave it, it's probably not for you, and you know, that's okay. On the other hand, if you are already trying to figure out where you order one from even before you've gotten to this part of the video, Chompy might be for you. If you're taken with it, I will add that right now there's a couple listings on Reverb, at least at time of recording, and they are wildly inflated in price. Do not buy them, you will regret it. It hurts to wait, but I'm pretty confident that Chompy Club is trying to get these available after they've handled shipping them out to Kickstarter backers. So hold out for that, stay strong, I believe in you. So in conclusion, Chompy gets two thumbs up, very cool, very fun, love it, I'm excited to see where it goes in the future as Chompy Club add more features and future firmware updates. And speaking of the future, if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and hitting subscribe. It helps support the channel and also it'll mean that you can get alerted when I upload videos in the future. To close out, I thought we'd just try putting something together with Chompy and some samples that I recorded from little instruments in my studio through its mic, a kalimba, ukulele, toy piano, stuff like that. Um, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I hope you enjoyed. And I look forward to hopefully seeing you in the next video. Bye.